This is my solution for optical sensor array type 4 in 45 footprint. The process is quite simple, so I was surprised to see there wasn't much competition on this level. The first trick is obviously skip that set of stampers because it's a waste of footprint to go there. I bring in a set of three which are well together and two singles. A set of three stamps each side and then rotates and then the two singles join on. It's very simple. Each one pushes the next one into the exit zone so there's not really much to this. It's Honestly it's a very simple level. This is my solution for landing alignment lights in 55 footprint. It's a little bit messy. I was almost out of space, especially on the first half. And it's very slow. It takes about 1,500 cycles to run. So I will fast forward it a little and then I will go through it from start to finish. Okay. The first trick is this block fires the blocker constantly, which pushes the, pushes the input sideways rather than having them come off the inputs forwards, which would waste footprint. Then I lift them up into these three channels, which saws them down into their basic components. This one gets a blue, this one gets an orange, and this one gets a white, or center block. The blue and orange are grouped together and come up here, and they're put into groups of five, the top of which is eviscerated and the other four which are welded together and sent to the exit. The centre blocks are also grouped in fives, the top of which is eviscerated and the only reason for that is to keep them in sync with the edge blocks. The reason for eviscerating the top block is because the edge blocks on either side of the output have an alternating pattern. So you can see this one has orange at the back and this one has blue at the back. Because they come out of the inputs in the repeating pattern, eviscerating every fifth one swaps it around for each half of the output. Here we go. Let's have a look. There we go. This timer here is a long form sort of timer that fires once every 30 cycles, I think, when this sensor connects. It goes up here and that pushes the welder which is timed to hit when the final block falls onto the output. It also fires at other times as you just saw but after a lot of tinkering I managed to get it so that it doesn't break anything. So that's about it. It's sort of simple but it's honestly almost out of space and I had to use a lot of weird floating platforms using lifters that move around just to make sure it all stays together. This lifter and uh, the three chambers here are one block away from reaching the uh, sort of final path I wanted for the footprint so it was quite a tight fit. I will go into a nice vantage point and let it run. Ugh, it's almost at the build limit. Terrible. There we go, I'll fast forward it. This is my solution for nice chair in 36 footprint. The solution is reasonably simple, although this part is a little bit convoluted. What this is doing is building a sequence of vertical stacks of different heights. So if I get a bunch of blocks up here, when it triggers, it pushes together and we get an output of, uh, let's call that three, three, two, one, one, two. These get lifted up and welded together. They get order flipped around. And then they fall down to the exit where they are placed together. As you can see that sequence is the right heights to make the output. When this piece gets pushed on, the welders will actually push it into the output 
The reason for that is, like on my landing alignment lights, whoa, landing alignment lights puzzle, there's an extremely long timer hidden below the level, in line with the the welder. And when the sensor reaches the end point here, it will send a single pulse. This timer is actually very adaptable. Um, it's only one footprint wide, it can go around corners and you can make it time any amount that you want, so it's very useful. I'll just wheel it up so you can see the full machine in action. Give it a little bit of fast forward because it is quite slow. This is my solution to Relaxant Formula 13 in 99 footprint. There is quite a lot going on in this one, so I'll start with the tree crushing machine. This was difficult to reduce, but I came up with a reasonably simple um, design. It gets the one wood that you need and three leaves. These two leaves are still connected but that doesn't actually matter you can drop them into the machine like that it's it's happy these travel along and there's a two block delay so the wood piece falls down uh, into the the uh, chamber with the machine just turn off this the inputs here are a little fiddly because you can save two footprint by running that input over the top of that input. It doesn't really change much to the design, but it does change all the timing, which means I had to go back to the drawing board when I was doing this. This gets a lid and a jar. The lid and the jar get lifted up and mixed into the inputs of this stuff. The reason for that is I tried to design it with two input channels, one for the jar parts and one for the leaves, and it was too complicated to have two conveyors running this way and another conveyor running to the output all in one line. So instead I mixed the inputs together and separated them again. The way that works is fairly simple. The jar parts come in, and the jar happens to be resting in the right place when the leaves come in. The tall block of leaves is detected by this sensor and pushed in with this pusher. That's no problem. And through a little stroke of synchronicity, the little leaves are pushed in by this conduit, which runs underneath all of this. Yada, yada, yada. Up above this lifter all the way down to here, where it detects this jar. When the lid moves past, it doesn't interfere, so that is simply there for timing. The sensor up top also pushes the constructed jars to the output, which I'll show. I had to do that because there wasn't enough space to put a lifter and a welding machine with a sensor on top. So when this double leaf comes past, that gets pushed to the output. Yep, there we go. Nice and simple, I guess. So it's a bit messy. Rooting the conduits all over the, the map was kind of a silly way of doing it, I guess. But it works really well, so... Nothing to complain about. Who knows? Maybe it can be beaten. This is my solution for drone maintenance in 108 footprint. The solution is very much on the complicated side. The trick, which I've seen a few people discuss, is to eviscerate four-fifths of the input tank. I take two tracks and one central block from each input. 
then reconstruct the structure of the tank on a single conveyor and weld it all together. It's extremely slow so I'll just leave it running for the duration of this explanation. Right. There we go. To separate the tank out I just use a pusher and some conveyors and another pusher. There's an eviscerator here to trim off extra imp central blocks that come in. These blocks come up in this order, track, central, track, and get pushed in groups of three. The lower track separates out the central block here into its own channel. The tracks themselves just get welded in groups of five and pushed along the bottom. The central blocks get paired up and dropped into this, which builds the sort of middle bit of the tank. The radar blocks come in. They get welded into groups of five simply to correct the ratios and there's a few uh, sort of platforms to slow it down so that the uh, welders finish when the central blocks are in the right place. So here's a block of five. Four of these get eviscerated and the last one comes in right when we have done five central blocks so it's in the right place. When another pair of central blocks comes in, it triggers this sensor, which moves this blocker, which actually wastes one footprint. I couldn't find a way of getting rid of that, but to be honest, this solution is so complicated, I'm not that bothered. The sensor here opens this blocker and drops a turret down, which gets welded on. Again, that welder is wasting another footprint but it's, it, I tinkered for a long time trying to figure out a way of reducing that and I, I couldn't do it. It may be possible, but I've kind of done all I can here. The turrets themselves just constantly get rebuilt and each turret just destroys the previous one, so four fifths, four -fifths of the turrets get destroyed as well, correcting the input ratios. Now here we have something really weird, it's a sort of stamping welder. I'll go down here and you can see it in action. When the tank pieces come in, this part welds all three bits together. So here comes a turret and another track and as you can see, there you go, it welds them together. This was really, really tricky to set up, especially because it needed an odd number of cycles between each stamp, otherwise it would knock tank parts off and it wouldn't come in at the right frequency. So I had to build a little sort of loopy thing, <laughs> I don't know what you call it, with conveyors built in so they roll off each other to make it into an odd number of cycles. The blockers here and down here are simply so that when this starts off it doesn't get pushed off by these conveyors which roll past on this uh, starting conveyor. So that's all the parts of the solution. It's ridiculously slow. It's, I think, slightly faster than the landing alignment lights but only a little bit and it's extremely inefficient. If I accelerate it, it slows down my computer so you can tell it's a good solution. So yeah, there you go. What a mess. <laughs>